Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dave Natman of the Manjaro. That's why I'm here with a huge update. A huge update from the Eli Lilly 2023 quarter two conference call. You're on the pin. That's why you're here because we're all here to learn a little bit more about the medications that we're on. Specifically, we're going to cover uh, a lot of information about Manjaro and obviously some of the other Eli Lilly drugs because that's what we do in these recaps. So if you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, you know the drill. Hit that like, hit that bell, hit that sub. Make sure you get all the notifications for all of the videos that we do on this channel. I got my notes here. I got my notes and we're going to cover it. Um, before we get too deep into it, I just want to give you kind of a, a forewarning that there was a lot of information covered about ritatotride, about orforglipron, uh, and about terzepatide all information that wasn't new that we have covered on this channel. So if you want uh, to know more about ritatotride and uh, or forglipron, you're going to want to check out my uh, GLP-1 playlist that talks about all the GLP-1s that are available. It's one of my newer videos uh, as the information has been newer. So um, not much to report on, on terzepatide uh, as far as the clinical trials go. They talked about the Surmount 3 and Surmount 4. We just did a video on those that basically showed you need to be on the medication long term, right? So that that was kind of the big takeaway from those uh, those as well um, on ritatotride. So this is an interesting. Um, we we covered the weight loss and how ritatotride people tended to lose more weight in a shorter amount of time than they did on uh, the dual agonist Manjaro. Um, they lose more on the triple agonist and in a shorter amount of time. So that's not new. What is new is that um, with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, they saw an 80% reduction over 24 weeks in the fat in the liver for those who were taking uh, the higher doses of ritatotride, which is just amazing uh, on the weight loss side. If you don't want to go back and watch that video, you can know that after 48 weeks on the higher doses, people lost up to 24.2% of their body weight. Again, you have to know that that's non-diabetics. And then with the side effects that are comparable, uh, comparable profile to other GLP-1s now, one of the things that they didn't address uh, was this stuff with the uh, heart arrhythmias, which I think is going to be something that they're going to have to address at some point. Uh, but obviously, they don't see this as a big enough deal to not continue to move forward with this. I think it probably has to do with rapid weight loss. Um, so we'll kind of see how that pans out. Um, there is a Triumph Phase 3 trial coming with ritatotride that's going to cover uh, osteoarthri osteoarthritis in the knees, uh, obesity, and sleep apnea. So that those will all be kind of included in this Phase 3 trial. Um, you know, what's interesting, one of the interesting things about ritatotride is the diabetic trials are only in phase two for ritatotride, where the obesity trials are in phase three. So if you read between the lines, it's more likely that we'll see a designation for obesity with ritatotride and then diabetes, which was the inverse of how Manjaro was. So very interesting to note there. That is what we know about ritatotride. Okay. So let's keep going here. Let's talk about orforglipron. Really not a whole lot new to report on orforglipron. We talked about how it's going to be the first small molecule GLP-1, the first non-peptide GLP-1. Um, the interesting news here is that Pfizer had one in clinical trials that they abandoned uh, back at the end of June, uh, which was a similar molecule to orforglipron, and it was because of the way that it was acting on the liver, and liver enzymes were kind of going out of whack for people. So uh, they they said, Lily said that they did not see this as derailing or or um, or an issue with orforglipron, but we'll have to watch that moving forward. That is really what was breaking about orforglipron, not a ton of information. So. Yeah, most of the information that was about the clinical trials we've already covered, so we're not going to waste any more time on those. We're going to get right to what I think was the big, big theme of this uh, conference call, and that was accessibility. Like, we know it's a great drug, right? We've established that. Uh, Eli Lilly's making money hand over fist on Manjaro. Uh, we all know that. Uh, but how are they going to keep up with the supplies, right? How are they going to keep this in people's hands? So obviously they have the RTP site that came online uh, or is coming online line by line in North Carolina. They've got the other uh, site in North Carolina that is coming on in Concord probably towards the end of the year, which will be exciting. And then they have... Uh, factories coming online in Ireland and Indiana. That's not new news, but uh, those are all still on track. And it is interesting to note that those 
uh, lines that are manufacturing Manjaro are coming on line by line. Instead of waiting for the whole factory to be done and then kind of turning this on switch on, they're able to bring it on as each line is complete, which is going to help alleviate some of the supply chain woes, though they do anticipate those woes persisting into next year uh, as it comes online for weight loss indication. Um, so the interesting thing, this is the big breaking news here. So five minutes in, we're going to break some news here. Um, so we talked about the vials. We broke news about the vials, the Manjaro vials that were approved. They're calling it, you know, new presentations. So the OG pen, we've talked about the OG coupon on this channel. We're going to talk about the OG pen. The OG pen isn't going anywhere, but there are going to be other options. One option is the vial, which you'll be able to load a single dose yourself and shoot it up with a, uh, with a uh, insulin syringe. Now we know that it, Manjaro is going to be available in a multi-dose pen. Okay, so this is the multi-dose pen that they use currently for their insulin. Uh, and so you'll be able to adjust the pen very similar to what you get with Ozempic. So again, these aren't replacing the old pen if that's the style that you like. They're just going to be another option, especially as Manjaro grows uh, with the obesity indication and into other markets around the world. So that's one way that they are going to stay on top of this is just by giving you options. I know a lot of people have been asking, especially those who took Ozempic, to get Manjaro in that same kind of pen. And it sounds like that option is coming along uh, by the end of the year. Those will be available. Um, that is really the breaking news about the Manjaro supply is... You're going to be able to get those in the Ozempic-like pens. Uh, so definitely, definitely check that out. Um, some of the other interesting information um, that I found interesting on the topic of accessibility was how much, um, how important the passing of TROA is. I did a short on that earlier. Um, I think the Treat and Reduce Obesity Act, which has been reintroduced in Congress, we want to be talking to our senators about passing that right now. We need... The, the, why, Dave? Why? I don't, I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not an older person. I don't need Medicare. Well, someday you will be. <laughs> so we want to be advocating now. We want to be advocating for those who may need it now. Uh, but also once the private sec public sector adopts a, a standard of care um, as it relates to the the medicine um, that they, they add to their pres prescription uh, coverage, uh, then the public, public sector, excuse me, the private sector tends to follow. So Sorry, I got a lot of thoughts swirling around in my head. So very interesting information there. So one of the other big topics of this call today was the study that came out and it just broke news today, probably to take the wind out of the sail a little bit of, of Eli Lilly's massive earnings call. Um, and that is that uh, there was a uh, study that came out on Wigovi that, that showed that those who were in the 2.4 so the study was like 17,000 plus people, ages 45 and old, older with obesity. Uh, and it monitored these people's uh, heart issues that they were having. And so ultimately what the semaglutide study showed is that usage of the semaglutide reduced uh, incidences of heart attack and stroke by over 20%. And so Eli Lilly really sees this as being an advantage to the entire class of medications versus specifically uh, benefiting Novo Nordisk and Wagovi, uh, just because, you know, these medicines all belong to the same class and ultimately, you know, kind of implying that I think the, the real benefit is not from the semaglutide itself, but from the weight loss that is induced by these GLP-1 medications and that the weight loss is really what is responsible for, uh, that really positive outcomes. Obviously, Lily is doing their own trials, um, that are similar, uh, but with kind of different endpoints. And so those are going to be farther down the line because obviously terzepatide is much newer than semaglutide is. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that all works out. Um, really, those are the main updates. Those are the main updates today from the Eli Lilly conference call. Uh, I've tried to keep this as brief as possible by not including all the information about orforgolipron and ritatatride and terzepatide that we've already covered on this channel. I will link to some of those videos in the description of this video. Make sure that you hit that like button before you go. And if you're not a subscriber, please uh, consider subscribing. If you wanna become a member and support the channel and support my work that way, links in the description below. You can become a member for $2.99 a month. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being the best part of what I do over here at Man in the Manjaro. And we will catch you on the next one.